For those of you that are a little curious about how I've been making these and some little secret tips, some things I've never heard anybody doing before, I did take a um, triple thick, which is a um, varnish, and I, uh, to be honest with you, it's getting a little old and a little thick. So I put it in a blender, a little bit of water, and you may have seen my gold leaf. This is copper leaf. Very thin little bit of copper. It is that is many times thinner than like aluminum foil that you're used to using. I don't know, maybe a hundredth of the thickness. Anyway, put it right in the blender with this, and so it does settle, so you can kind of see the bottom. I have to keep it upside down. But as I varnish these, it then will allow a uh, little bits. I don't know if you can see that or not. Little bits of the copper to be in the varnish, and then of course it gets spread out. So I'm gonna try to move you down so you can see that. See the little bits of copper in the varnish. So hopefully it gets a little dusting. <laughs> as I spread this out. When I'm doing this, I always do my perimeters first. Same way I teach the kids how to vacuum or clean. Let's start at the edges. The inside seems to just kind of take care of themselves. Since I'm doing six of these, I use a big old brush so I can crank these out. I do it six of these at a time. And this has a texture to it. The pattern is embossed on it, so. Got a bunch of nooks and crannies. So as I, as I brush this, not only is, am I getting all the sides, because each one of these bevels here has a side, right? Like a north, south, east, west side to it. But um, it's also pushing some of this little bits of copper into those areas. So it'll kind of cling to the side, which is the highest place, which has the copper effect on it anyway. So it's kind of pushing it into the right area, if you will. If you've been following me at all, you know that these are... Uh, have a lot of layers to them. I start off, because copper is typically the most expensive paint. I want to use as little of it as possible. So depending on how, like if you've seen statues that have the copper and some of it's shiny and some of it is that patina color, like the Statue of Liberty, usually the copper areas are the areas that either been protected by the elements or have been touched by people. So you'd see like, famous statues over in Italy and it's good luck to touch the Heine <laughs> on the statue of David or something and uh, it's the only part <laughs> that is shiny and copper coppery and that's because honestly hand oil gets on it and actually protects it from oxidation so in a play in, in like this honestly the truth is is that if it was a ceiling tile that hadn't been touched it would be exactly the opposite effect. Is that deep down in the grooves would be the copper, and then the highlights or the high points would be the oxidation, again, like the Statue of Liberty. But because of economy and honestly just wanting the beauty of the copper to come out, I've reversed that process. And so deep down is the light patina, a little higher up is the uh, darker patina colored, um, this, this dark blue here versus this light blue. And there's also black in there um, to get a variety, but, but it takes several layers uh, to get it on and finishing it with varnish. So that's what this looks like. And that's, uh, that one's done. Those over there are done the same way. You kind of maybe see a different shine here off of the light. Or 
we go. And then over here is a couple more. Three more left to do with the varnish. But they're, um, a lot of people are surprised to see that it's, it's not stiff, it's a piece of paper. piece of uh, wallpaper, so it's a thicker kind of paper. Hope you're enjoying seeing this as much as I'm enjoying doing them. Bye.